Welcome back to Air Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Selesnia Angels. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to another gameplay video. Today, we are going to do an Explorer event. We did one last Thursday, had a blast despite losing quite a bit. Uh, and so we're going to go a different route today and try Selesnia Angels. Uh, we'll see how things go. You can kind of see by the chapters in the video how many games we end up playing. Uh, but... That's okay. There's a little bit of a spoiler if you go that route. But uh, this is Selesnia Angels, and what's so nice about the Selesnia package in particular is that you do get access to Coco, Collected Company being one of the best uh, value cards, in my opinion, um, for a number of different formats, but of course Explorer being one of them. Four mana instant speed. Uh, you look at the top six cards of your deck, and then you put two creature cards with mana value three or less onto the battlefield immediately. Uh, now, what's great about that is every creature in our deck fits the bill. Uh, and obviously, we are focused on angels. So we've got some of the obvious things like Righteous Valkyrie, Resplendent Angel. We've got Giada, Font of Hope, uh, Youthful Valkyrie, and then, of course, Bishop of Wings, all of which, well, this is not an angel, all of which is built around the angel package. Uh, now, we do have a couple of other things in here that are not angels. We've got the Luminarch Aspirant, which is a cleric, uh, which I believe anytime an angel or a cleric enters the battlefield, obviously we gain life off of the Valkyrie. So it does still kind of work with the deck. Uh, this also is going to throw some 1-1 counters around so we can get kind of aggressive. Uh, and then Skyclave Apparition, which really doesn't it has no synergy. It's just a three mana two two that comes in and removes a thing. Uh, and so it's actually very good, of course, with Coco, but in general, that's all it really is, is a removal spell on a stick. So uh, it does get buffed, of course, with the Righteous Valkyrie triggers, but all, all of that just to say it's very good. Uh, we do have Fateful Absence in here for some removal and then just a one of Heroic Intervention. Uh, I will say this was taken from Aether Hub as one of the kind of meta-ish decks for best of one. Uh, and so we're just going to try it out today. Again, Explorer, guys, is brand new to me. The first time I played it was the Explorer event last week. Uh, while I have played and just tested a little bit with this deck, that it really was not a lot. Uh, and so today's going to be an experience. We're going to try it. We may lose every single game, but you know what? We're going to have fun doing it. You know, that, sometimes that's all that matters. So let's jump into the Explorer event, guys. Let's have some fun and hopefully we can get some wins. Uh, all right, guys. So before we actually jump in, I just wanted to go ahead and show you if we do get seven wins, we actually get 500 gems, three packs and one play in point. We talked about these play in points uh, when John and I did the last podcast episode um, or actually technically the, the podcast uh, in the previous week. Um, it was an interesting thing to discuss. So I just wanted to throw that out there uh, that that is kind of the prize structure. We may not get every win. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of show you guys how things progress. And if you get three losses, you are out. So let's go ahead. Let's jump right in. Uh, this is a great start, actually. The Bishop of Wings is perfect. We can throw that uh, Resplendent Angel down on turn three and hopefully one or both of those sticks. Um, <laughs> and then, of course, we do have Fateful Absence as well uh, as just a just a removal hit, just in case. Um I will say in practice, I had better luck with the Angels deck than I did the Mono Red deck. I literally did not practice the Mono Red deck at all. Uh, and so while it's been a little while since I've messed with this deck, it is definitely one that I'm, uh, I'm really interested in. I think it'll be a fun one. So let's go ahead. Let's drop that Bishop of Wings right now. This is about the best turn two play because it's such a good engine card. Anytime you throw an Angel down, you gain four life. And then if an Angel dies, you actually get a one one in its place. Uh, and so you really get a lot of value off of that. Coco is also very good. Uh, fantastic. Well, let's go ahead and drop the Resplendent Angel. We'll go ahead and gain four. And there's really no reason not to attack in. Uh, so I think we'll just go ahead and do that. Uh, interesting that they have the Birth of Miletus. I haven't actually seen this card in a very long time since, wow, Theros Standard, I suppose. <laughs> uh, but yes, very, very good for the opponent there. Uh, let's, let's drop this. I think we just go ahead and play the Righteous Valkyrie. We will gain four life, which puts us at 28, which does mean that we can pretty safely attack in here. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> 
Uh, obviously, they can block if they want, but truthfully, what we're just trying to do is keep them away from their own 27 life total. Uh, and so if they block, we don't have to worry about it. If they don't block, they're much farther away. Uh, and we do have the collected company here at some points, so we should, should, quote unquote, be able to do some work. Also, just having another Resplendent Angel means we actually can trigger both of them next turn and start to really take over the game. So we'll see. Uh, that's a perfectly fine start for me uh, because Revitalize just means they're digging for something and they don't necessarily have it. So perfectly happy with that. That's also fine. One thing to consider as well is a Fateful Absence. Uh, which, honestly, I think we're going to go for here. Uh, and I think it is the Righteous Valkyrie that we go ahead and take down. I know they get a 1-1 in response here, but it's really not going to do that much. Uh, this is going to set us over the edge once again. And now we can basically just attack in with everything in the air. Um and they don't have that buff available to them. The Bishop of Wings is certainly a card that I'd like to get off the field, but it's not as important as just having a lot of stuff coming down like this. Uh, and so now we're not out of the woods, but we are certainly in the, the commanding position. We have to consider the fact that Righteous Valkyrie uh, or Collected Company is always a good option. And in this case, wow, Divine Visitation, not a card I actually expected. Uh, and they go ahead and give up. That is our game one, guys. We got the win. Fantastic. Let's jump into game two. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. Uh, this is an awkward hand. Uh, if we get an untapped land, we're in really good shape. If we don't, we're probably just going to lose it. The, the cards in the hand are exactly what we want, though. I don't think this is normally a keep, uh, but I'm going to try it. Uh, if we get just any untapped source, we can at least play a Luminarch Aspirant, ideally a Bishop of Wings, obviously. We do have that start potentially available, and there we go. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and throw the Bishop down. Uh, it does look like we're potentially going to be against a, uh, a control-style deck, which is not ideal, um, but it's all good. We'll do the best we can. Uh, the question is, do we go for the Righteous Valkyrie, or do we wait? Um... I think first things first, I'm actually, do we attack in? Probably not. They could have a flash thing. I don't know what. It looks like they might just have, okay, Tainted Indulgence. Well, looks like Parhelion is the move for them. Uh, and so this is certainly gonna be a difficult one. Uh, the Parhelion play is very, very good. It's obviously a very strong card. Uh, and there's the Esper gonna connive with Rafine's informant okay um, I'm kind of okay with that that really doesn't bother me that much okay they do fatal push frustrating but not the end of the world for sure uh, let's go ahead and do this now the question is do we go for the Coco or do we just go for the resplendent angel play um, I think what I'm gonna do is save the Coco I'm gonna go for the resplendent angel play now uh, get in for four the reason I'm going this direction uh, is if they burn through some of their removal, the Collected Company obviously is an easy, easy way to rebuild. Uh, and while this is less mana efficient in the sense that we could have used all of our mana this turn and then next turn played land, been able to play Resplendent plus Luminarch Aspirant, I think this works out okay. Um, I am a little skeptical that that was the right call. Part of me wants to like leave this up in a sense where we can do it after a sweeper or something along those lines. So that's part of why I want to hold on to this as well, just in case. They definitely are going to be removal heavy, I would imagine, um, but we'll see. Another informant. That's fascinating. Uh, okay, sure. Interesting. Um, so we'll play this out for white. Uh, do we want to play the Coco is the question. Um, kinda, yeah. I mean, I, I'm a little unsure if it's the right call because they could very easily have a sweeper. I think with that in mind, let's play slightly safer. Let's go the Resplendent, or uh, excuse me, the Luminarch Aspirant call. Um, guess we'll throw it here. 
get in for a reasonable attack here and now they are down to four so basically we're getting them into a position where coco becomes basically lethal if they don't if they sweep here uh this would be the worst time for them to sweep i suppose um because we did play the Luminarch Aspirant, but we did get them down to four. So we can time this appropriately in such a way that we might just be able to throw Coco down at the end of one of their turns and then attack in for the win. Uh, we're also at a very comfy 30. Uh, and this really doesn't do that much. Uh, so I think we just win. Um, obviously they can, you know, crew this, but that really doesn't stop our, uh, our win here. Um, yeah, there we go. Guys, two wins down. So far, so good. Let's keep it going. All right, guys, here we are again. Uh, game number three. This is an interesting hand, actually. Um, hmm. Do we want to keep this? Uh, again, I'm not super sold that this is a great hand, but it worked out for us last time. We're going to try it. Temple Garden can come down untapped if we so choose. So uh, there is a world where we kind of just are able to, uh, to get there. It looks like we are... Gonna be against Boros Aggro or Boros Burn, potentially, uh, which is certainly not ideal. Um, I do like that quite a bit. Do we need to kill this? That's an excellent question. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what happens. I probably will just Fateful Absence this if they target it with something, which is obviously their game plan, right? Um, and if they get us here, they get us. Uh, I'd certainly hope not, but... We'll see. I'm gonna go ahead and kill it here. Now that they're down on the mana, they also don't have another thing to throw out. Uh, cool. We could have technically waited, I suppose, if they had gotten another land, they could have obviously played something else on it, but now they just don't really have anything. Uh, they did get rid of another Homestead Courage, which is perfectly reasonable. Um, I'm gonna throw this down and I'm just gonna throw the Bishop of Wings. Um, we're probably gonna take a hit here. They're they're obviously gonna try and pump up the Arcanist and uh, attack in a good bit for some freebie spells, which they really don't even have to do that much, but uh, that's fine. We actually have quite a bit that's able to come down next turn here, so it's cool with me. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, yeah, Reckless Rage, great call. Uh, perfectly fine. Another land would be great. We could potentially get him with a collected company at some point, so that would be kind of nice. Uh, but this is certainly going to be a rougher matchup for us regardless. Um, okay, land. Do we just wait? Uh, alternatively, we could Bishop of Wings plus Youthful Valkyrie just to, like, gain some life if we wanted. Um... But I, I, I think the play is going to be to wait. We can surprise block with the Collected Company if we need. Uh, and it's obviously difficult for them to deal with anything because they don't have anything to target on the field. So we'll see. Uh, honestly, what would be really nice is a Skyclave Apparition just to... <laughs> or whatever it is, just to deal with this. That would be really cool. Uh, kind of curious to see what they do here. We wait until they attack and target the spell in their graveyard with the Dreadhorde Arcanist before we actually play the Coco, uh, because that just means they can't really do too much in in the way of killing our creatures, unless they, of course, have just an instant speed spell. So let's see what they target. Uh, what does this hit? Uh, let's go into full control mode just to make sure. All right, we'll go ahead and do this. Uh, we can come out of full control now. There's the Skyclave Apparition. That's pretty awesome. Uh, Alright, let's do this. We're going to get this out of there. Um, that's a very lucky hit. Uh, okay. Interesting that they went for that, actually. Uh, I don't know that that is a play I would have made. Um, I guess they're drawing into, trying to draw into something. Uh, I'm not really sure. Um... And I will double block. If they have a, a kill spell, they have a kill spell. But we're basically just trying to get their board clear uh, for next turn. And there we go. Whew, well played. That was beautiful. Three in a row, guys. We're kicking some butt. Let's go for game four. 
All right, guys, here we are for game number four. This is definitely a keep. We've got the Giada, which does help us get to the uh, turn three plays here, even with the two lands. Now, we don't necessarily expect Giada to stick around for very long. Giada, Giada, which, whichever one it is. Um, but we definitely have some moves here. So uh, even if it if uh, she dies, we've got Luminar Casper, Youthful Valkyrie, both of which set up well for future turns. So... Uh, the opponent does take a mulligan as well, uh, which is obviously helpful for us. We could go ahead and lead on the farmland. I'm actually pretty happy to have the heroic intervention, seeing that they are at least Orizov, uh, does make me think, okay, we, we might have a rough matchup here just on the removal end of things. Uh, looks like Mardu, in fact. Uh, alright, let's go ahead and throw her out. Uh, hope she sticks if she doesn't. It's not the end of the world, but it certainly is a hit. Uh, yep, Mardu is the move. Yep. Uh, very good from the opponent's side. So this is just a ridiculous play. <laughs> they get to do this. They get to have all the stuff. Um, unfortunately, we are not going to block. We are going to take a lot of damage. Um, yep. Turn three, Parhelion. I mean... Pretty amazing. Uh, okay, land is not bad. Uh, let's do this. What can we do though here is kind of the trick, right? Um, I think we just have to throw the Righteous Valkyrie out there. Um, it's nice because it does grab a 1-1 counter from Giada here, so we do have a block, but we're really not in great shape, obviously, at this point. Um, Grease Fang, man, what a great card. Just ridiculously good. They get to deal just one damage immediately. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's a way we can get out of this. It's not going to be easy, uh, for sure. I think that actually makes it impossible because they can just attack with these three and they win the game. Um, yeah. Yeah, and they get to uh, handle that. Well done, opponent. I'm going to go ahead and concede. They just have it. Let's jump into the next one. All right, guys, here we are for our uh, fifth game. I think we're three wins, one loss, uh, but I think we can try and keep this. While we don't have the green mana, again, we've got the Giada, which is just such a useful card early in the game. Uh, we do have the Righteous Valkyrie, the Resplendent Angel, basically all the tools we would want. Uh, the only thing I, I would suggest is missing is green mana, and then, of course, um, the uh, uh, Bishop, excuse me, I could not think of the word. Uh, interesting they didn't kill this. If they have red mana, I'm assuming they have, you know, one mana shocks or something along those lines. Uh, kind of curious that they didn't go for it there. wonder if they maybe just don't have it. Uh, cool. Okay. Here, there they go. There's the Bone Crusher. Yep. Fully expected that. That's fine. Um, so, what do we do? Uh, on one hand, I kind of want to leave this up. On the other hand, if they don't have a whole lot of burn, we can kind of just get them by playing bigger stuff. So I'm just going to play the Righteous Valkyrie, hope it sticks. Uh, if they attack with the Burning Tree, I don't think we block, uh, because that does open up the Bone Crusher play to kill the Righteous Valkyrie. So I don't think we do that, although they kind of made the decision for us there, which was kind of nice. Um, all right, Resplendent Angel definitely seems like the play. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, and I, again, will not attack. I want to get our life total into a very comfy place before we start worrying about what they're doing here. So, um, or worrying about attacking them. They tend to burn out a lot quicker, obviously, and the life gain alone is a pretty big swing for us. Uh, I will do this. Um, again, not gonna risk that, uh, but that's annoying, but fine. Uh, they do get a good bit of damage in here. Uh, sure. Bishop. We're a little stuck on lands here. Uh, very frustrating for sure. What can we do? Not a ton. Um, I think we just have to set up as best we can. Uh, we do gain some life there, which is nice. Uh, we will not attack. Again, just as a in-case measure, I need to be able to block, so I don't feel like we can just throw two damage at him for that. I think it's not worth it. There's the robber. We've got three mana available. 
Uh, curious to see if they move the Embercleave. They have the mana to do it. All right, so this is interesting, actually. Um, hmm. So, we could obviously offer up a, a trade here. Um, I think we do. Obviously, they, they kill the Righteous Valkyrie, I assume. Uh, but at the very least, we get the Bone Crusher Giant off the field here. We get a 1 1 in its place. And now, uh, we actually can do quite a bit more. So, yeah, I think I'm kind of okay with this. Um, let's Youthful Valkyrie. Let's Youthful Valkyrie again. Uh, this is going to gain us quite a bit of life. Um, I think I'll start poking him for one. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, hey, they are really working at it here, but the idea being that it's going to be tricky for them to, to fight through all the life gain, even with the Embercleave. Uh, and truthfully, I'm just glad we got the Bone Crusher off the field. That was, I mean, the Embercleave is the threat for sure, but the Bone Crusher being a 4-3 offers up a lot more damage, so. Uh, I'm kind of still okay with this. Like... Yeah, this at least allows us to kill the, the robber. And again, we just get another 1-1 one, one to replace. So like, kind of cool with all of it. Uh, yeah, sure. We're just in the, the threat management category here, guys. That's really all we're trying to do. Uh, and so if we can keep trading off with their threats, we should be in a place where we can start uh, taking over a little bit. So let's do this. Uh, we do gain some life back, um, and I think we just start attacking in with more at this point. Um, they've got one card left in hand. They can't play it this turn. This is four damage. Oh, this has reach. Whoops. Completely forgot that had reach. <laughs> uh, that's fine. Yeah, you got me. Um, Kari Zev, huh? Yeah, it's a pretty good one. Um... That's terrible for us. So they do just get to Fateful Absence anything at this point. That's really bad. I was kind of hoping we'd draw a Fateful Absence here, uh, but they got it. That's fine. They're definitely going to take out the Bishop. Yeah. That's 100% the play. Uh, no blocks. We're going to have to take it. Um, and we'll see what this last card is potentially. Just a land. Okay. Cool. Uh, I say just to land, this is Ramanop Ruins, which is definitely a problem card for everybody involved. Um, it's actually very helpful to draw that because now we can do this, uh, we can do this. Um, I'm going to throw it here. Uh, so only the robber has reach. Oh, we should have attacked with the spirit tooth. That was kind of dumb. Um, okay. Ooh, very nice. That's bad. That's like super bad. Uh, yeah. At least they can't attack this turn. That would be terrible. Um, if that's all they attack with, I am fine. We win, actually. Kind of interesting they went for this because this is their blocker. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it looks like they might be reconsidering here. I definitely would, uh, but that's fine by me. They are going to attack with Kari Zev. Uh, that's kind of interesting. I mean, we could just block like this. Um, no, honestly... Just say no blocks. I'm going to take it. I don't particularly care about that three damage at this point. Um, they have to leave that Robber of the Rich available, which is important. Um, give me a Coco, please. Bishop? Uh, Bishop isn't bad, I suppose. Uh, we could have actually just won it, potentially. Um, all right, so I think we have to go here. Um, hmm. They obviously are going to be able to move things over. Uh, we might have just 
messed ourselves up a little bit here. So if we attack with all of these, they block either of these two and then take seven, which means they don't lose. Um, technically eight. Unfortunately, I don't think we can attack. That was kind of a misplay, I think. Uh, we had the ability to plus this up, which would have given it lifelink, which is important. Um, so we're going to be in a position where we're having to block Anax, which is just such a problem card. Wow, they're just going for it. Uh, interesting. Okay. So how do we do this? Um, all right. So let's take some stuff out here for sure. Uh, they obviously are going to get some stuff in response to all of this. So we do, we are very aware of that. Uh, let's block here. So I think we live off of this. That's 10, uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we don't live off of that. Um, uh, okay, so we have to do this. I don't know that this is right. <laughs> I did not math this 100% correctly, I am sure. Um, they also just have Ramanop Ruins, so worth noting that they can just kill us with that, potentially. I didn't math correctly. I think they are going to kill us here. Ooh. Oh, mathed it to one. <laughs> that was ambitious. Uh, wow, OK. Yeah, we did it. <laughs> that was such a lucky win. <laughs> that was stupid. Uh, we did it. Let's move on to the next one. All right, guys, here we are. I still can't believe that last game, but I am uh, very happy it went our way. Uh, we can definitely keep this. Uh, we can lead on the Temple Garden. We can Luminar Casper, and then we've got two options available for the upcoming turns. Uh... I'm actually going to go Youthful Valkyrie. It's harder for the Mono Red to deal with the three toughness. Uh, not that they can't, of course, but it's just the removal options are a little bit different. Uh, okay, looks like not Mono Red. Fascinating. Let's do this. Uh, do we want to go for Resplendent or do we just want to Skyclave Apparition? Um, I'm going to go Resplendent. Screw it. Let's go for the, the max damage. <laughs> Uh, we've got plenty of other Resplendent Angels, so I fully expect that this is going to be dealt with handily. Uh, but it's going to be a little bit trickier for them to, to manage it. Why? Why did they do that? Are they... Okay. That was an odd double... Four. That was a an interesting play. Uh, Alright, sick. Let's go Luminarch. Let's put it here. Uh, and let's attack it. Um, so now, if they play Bone Crusher, great. We can Skyclave Apparition, get it out of there, and then they really don't have much else to do. Um, yeah. Perfect. That's even better. <laughs> like, really, really. Uh, good. Okay, sick. Let's do this. Uh, oh, it doesn't hit. Oh, I forgot about that. Non tokens. Definitely forgot about that, but that's fine. Let's attack for five. Oh no! Oh no! I messed up. I messed up. Oh no! That's fine. Um, that was an oops for sure. I meant to just attack with the Resplendent Angel, but in my head, I was thinking, oh, we got the Goblin off the field. Welcome to Miss Play City, uh, where we have a lovely time. <laughs> uh, sure. I will warmly accept two damage to the face. It's fine. If we draw a land, we can win on the spot unless they can deal with Resplendent Angel, which I don't believe they can. Can they? Ah, okay. They're going to double up and find a way to kill it. Yeah, okay. That's fine. Um, annoying, not the end of the world, like at all. Uh, let's do this. 
We definitely have to kill Chandra here. Um, if we don't, obviously Chandra can start dealing with more stuff on the board. So we'll do that. And then, um, yeah, Bishop of Wings is very good because it just devalues a lot of the removal. If they deal with the Resplendent Angel, they we just get a 1-1 one -one flyer in response, which isn't a lot, but it's better than nothing. Uh, and it does mean that we can still be poking through for some damage here and there. So, I mean... Yeah, I feel like this is a relatively straightforward game plan. Um, my hope is they don't have a lot of removal left, but we'll see. We'll see. Regardless, I'm very happy with the way this event has gone so far. Um, I'll just say again from the last one, having lost three and only won one game, uh, it was kind of tricky. I thought, you know, wow, this is this is pretty rough. Uh, new format to deal with and all that stuff is, it's a lot to learn. Um, however, Seems to have really been okay so far. Uh, don't love this, of course, um, but we can poke through for a damage. Uh, we're definitely in a bad spot now. That Kolagon's command was perfect. Chandra's gonna be able to deal with the bishop, I assume. Uh, yep, makes sense. Uh, that's very good. And they don't attack, interesting. Righteous Valkyrie is not bad. Uh, let's obviously do this. Uh, get Chandra out of there. Let's go ahead and Righteous Valkyrie. So now, again, they're going to have to either double up in a way or have a Chandra to deal with the Righteous Valkyrie. So Righteous Valkyrie was a pretty good draw. A collected company would be amazing right now. Oh, phenomenal. Um, they do have quite a lot of power to throw down though with the bone crushers plus the the manlands uh so some things worth noting fatal push on the righteous valkyrie well you got me uh we're not gonna block um we'll we'll take two that's fine coco would still be really nice right now that's also very good they're gonna be able to exile start gaining some life back luminarch aspirants well it's not great um, definitely just attack for two. It's technically an avenue to win, <laughs> uh, albeit a very slow one. Uh, and with the Graveyard Trespasser, obviously, they, they have plenty they can do. Um, again, I don't think we actually do anything to, to block here. I think we just take it. Um, okay. Here comes two Bone Crushers. Give me a Coco, come on. Coco would be great. No. It's like the worst thing we could have drawn. Um, okay, four, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, plus one. So next turn they can just win. Uh, with that in mind, what do we do? I think we go here. Um, do we attack in? I think not, because they do have uh, man lands as well. Now this gets bigger, which is terrible. Yeah, I think we're pretty dead. Um, man, what a game. We did get flooded here, worth noting, um, which is fine. It happens. I uh, was really hoping it wouldn't, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I think we can just good game them here. Not sure why they're slow rolling. Um, Oh my god, yeah, okay, good game. <laughs> Let's go ahead and concede. Unfortunately, that's two losses. One more and we are done. But so far, so good, guys. A great run, in my opinion. Let's jump into the next one. All right, guys, here we are. Potentially our last game, uh, but I will try this. We need one more land, ideally a green source, but uh, really any land will be helpful here. Uh, we've got quite a number of very good three drops. The Skyclave Apparitions are generally very good uh, because especially against a deck that is obviously creature based, um, we can potentially just kind of, you know, get, get some removal going and start outpacing, uh, which would be nice. Um, although this could very easily just be the control deck with Kahira, uh, which is a thing. Uh, in fact, I saw that, who posted that? Was it Covert Go Blue? Somebody posted that. I was like, wow, that's actually interesting. Um, hey, I will take that. Um, I'm gonna let, we're gonna see what they do here. Uh, something tells me they've got removal, but I don't want them to use it on the Righteous Valkyrie, so we're gonna try this. <laughs> yep. 
Yep. I thought maybe that was the case. Okay. So we're gonna just go ahead and play a Righteous Factory. And hope for the best. Um, this is gonna be a tricky matchup. This is gonna be removal everywhere, uh, unfortunately. Alright, now I will just play Resplendent, expecting that either it gets countered or they deal with the Righteous Valkyrie. Yeah, they've got Sensor. Okay. Annoying that it was Sensor. Very annoying that it was Sensor, uh, because that's such a silly counter spell. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you got it. Alright, they're going to deal with the Righteous Valkyrie, I assume. Uh, we actually do get to deal with the Wandering Emperor with the Skyclave Apparition if we would like. Um, alternatively, we do just have Coco, but... Um, yeah, let's let's try this. I don't love it, uh, but it is a solution. They can get a 4-4 creature out of this, which is why this isn't necessarily great. Um, but uh, I think this could be okay. Uh, all right, so we just attack for two. Um, and I think here we're gonna just pass. I fully, uh, they definitely are gonna be expecting Coco, um, but this is kind of nice. Let's go ahead and do it now while they're tapped out. I think that's relatively important and let's get both of these down for sure. That's a lot of life gain. Um, and a lot more for them to deal with, so that's pretty good. They are going to have three lands available. I'm assuming they can kill something potentially here. Um, okay. Do we go for the other Righteous Valkyrie play? Uh, I don't think we do, actually. I'm going to go here. Expecting that this is going to get countered. Did not get countered. Okay. Um, I'm just going to go for it. I don't think this is a great idea. I'll be honest. Um, but we're going to do it. Uh, let's throw a counter here. Let's attack like this. I expect they can protect the Teferi though. Personally, I don't see why they wouldn't, so this seems like they've got a way out. Which is annoying, but not the end of the world. It's frustrating, but... Oh, they're gonna take the Righteous Valkyrie out. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so we do still take this down to a 2, which just means that they have to plus 1. Um, which I will take. They've had 2 marches, that's a land, that's fine. Yep. All right. And they put Kahira in their hand. Okay. Sick. Very sick. All right. Uh, I do like that. Let's go here. Let's attack here. Uh, and let's see what happens. Interesting game. Uh, they do have a Hall of the Storm Giants worth noting, which is very much live. Uh, and so they're going to start really getting some damage in um but if we draw any action spell we're okay um i'll consider that an action spell uh let's do this i'm actually gonna put it on the token i know that seems a little silly but i think they're gonna want to kill the righteous valkyrie more than anything else so <clears throat> all right Here's to hoping. Uh, they're cycling, which is a very good sign. It just means they probably don't have a lot. Uh, a land is fine. Narset's annoying. They can dig for something really good with Narset. Uh, do they reveal it? They do. Come on, whiff. They're not going to whiff, but get something terrible. Wow. Okay, well, that's not terrible. Uh, worth noting, though, they did tap... They auto-tapped the Hall of the Storm Giants, which is worth mentioning um but we i think just win i guess they can cycle a shark right uh for what one two they can cycle it for three uh yeah it's kind of fine bishop huh let's go ahead and bishop 
I'm gonna go ahead and Skyclave Apparition too, just to get Narset off the field. Because uh, I don't want them digging next turn. Um, do we... How do we want to do this? Uh, they literally are going to have to block. So let's do this. We just attack here. They literally have to cycle the shark. Um, and basically right now it's just down to their top card. Um, their top two, I suppose, because they do cycle. Yep. Honestly, it would have made sense for them to cycle for just one because it didn't really need to be a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, and that would have potentially given them a play, but Memory Deluge is rough. If they get a sweeper, we are done. Um, there's very little we can do. Double Deluge. Okay, that's a great sign. Yes, that's five wins, guys. We are getting so close. All right, let's keep it going. This is going to be a long video, but it's going to be worth it. All right, guys, here we are for game number seven, technically. Uh, we've got five wins and two losses, so this could very well be our last game. Uh, however, I am pretty stoked with the way this has turned out. We have done tremendously better than our previous uh, events, which obviously was not great. Uh, and so I'm really happy with this, and I'm enjoying the format. I think that's kind of the biggest thing is that uh, it feels like there's so much fun stuff you can do. Uh, and I really enjoy it. I think it's a it's a blast. I guess we could have played this for white, and it really wouldn't have mattered. Um, but we'll go ahead and play Giada. Giada, Giada, I don't know. I'm probably saying her name wrong. Um, but let's see what they've got. Looks like a burn spell. Sure. Makes sense. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. I'll pay two. Uh, and I'm just going to play Righteous Valkyrie. I don't think we need to overthink this. It's a little bit trickier to deal with than um, a two toughness creature and so they might be able to double up and kill it they might have a way but we're gonna force the uh the issue oh interesting <laughs> it's just a two mana draw a card and get a basic land that's fascinating uh really fascinating sure very cool um all right let's resplendent angel i don't see a huge reason not to i will attack Again, not a huge reason not to. I expect that they're going to be doing something very big here. Uh, they've got all the mana in the world. Having That's a very fascinating play to me. You get a land and you draw a card for two mana. That's pretty good. Oh, Fires of Invention. Wow, I forgot about this card. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, probably going to have a hard time on this one. Um, fair enough. <laughs> This is going to be interesting. I assume they're going to kill something. They kind of need-ish, too. Not literally, but, like, kind of. Chandra. Okay. So, yeah, they can kill, I assume, Righteous Valkyrie. I mean, Chandra's going to die, though, which is kind of nice. This is literally just a one-for-one. One. Ugh. I really wish we had something else. Um... Do we attack Chandra or do we Fateful Absence Chandra? Absence. Uh, I think we attack Chandra. So weirdly, <clears throat> I'm going to try the Giada play. Uh, I guess this really isn't that good though because they can, Giada only plays Angels, but it does mean that if we get Resplendent Angel down or just another land and we Coco, um, all the Angels are going to get an additional 1-1, one -one, which is pretty reasonable. Okay. What you getting? Karn is terrifying. Combustible gear hulk. Sure. Uh, you can mill three, deals damage. Uh, target of him may have you draw three cards. If they don't, you mill three cards. Oh. Um. I'm actually going to decline. Yeah, I'm very glad we did that. Um, okay, sick. Let's pay two. Let's actually Coco now. Ugh. Well, that's not ideal. Uh, we'll keep the 4-4. Four four. Um, let's kill Karn. 
I don't want to refill their hand here, so uh, giving them the three extra cards means they've got a lot more to do with Fires of Invention, and I don't want that option. So I will take some damage because we are a life gain deck and we can offset it. Uh, even if they attack in here for six, which isn't great for us, like we probably just take it. Uh, and then Fateful Absence, some things. Um, got a Field of Ruin. Okay. Uh, that really doesn't do too much. And they play a Fable. Okay, this isn't that big of a turn then. Fine by me. Attack me for six, by all means. This does have First Strike as well, so blocking it is not a great idea. Okay. Um, well, let's see. How do we want to do this? Um, let's do this. Uh, let's pass. Let's put a counter here maybe we'll attack for a buttload um and then we'll play the resplendent angel which gains us more life which means we get both resplendent angel triggers which means all of this happens so all right sick that was that was i think the line <laughs> uh part of me was considering killing the gear hulk which is a perfectly reasonable option i think um they're going to discard Golos and Fires. Makes sense. Neither one of those is very good. Double Fires is, like, really terrible. So now they're just facing a big board. Uh, if they can't deal with it, we win. If they can, it sucks. Karn. Okay. Let's see what they pull. Uh, they could have a number of different things here. Um, I'm not sure what they're going to actually get, but... Could be a lot of things. Shadow Spear. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's fine. I don't really care about Shadow Spear, I don't think. It's good, it's just... I think it's a little too late. I guess they gain some life out of the deal? But I think we just win. Man. What a series of games we have had, guys. This has been phenomenal. Okay, that was the other card they played th this turn. Shadow Spear is, because of Fires of Invention, they can only play two things a turn. Uh, and so that's it. <laughs> so they're just trying to gain as much life as they can, I suppose. So this is like a snap block because this is a dead Gear Hulk. Yeah, okay, cool. Now what? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll put a counter. I don't know. Let's say here. And there we go, guys. We got the win. We are at six. One more. It's down to this. Oh, my gosh. Either we win or we lose, guys. Let's see what can happen. All right, guys. This is the last game. Let's see if we can do this. This is definitely an interesting hand. Uh, I'm going to try it. Very three drop heavy, of course, which is not exactly ideal. It looks like Cauldron Familiar is going to be the play from the opponent. So this is going to be a rough one. Uh, this is the Cauldron deck. That means that they will have some combo stuff going on here. Uh, sure. Attack for one. Uh, Coco's pretty good. We can actually pass here uh, and potentially just blow up the Cauldron Familiar at this point, uh, or at some point. Jund, yeah. Oh, maybe we want to kill the Mayhem Devil. Yeah, let's do that instead. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do this now, uh, just because that's a that's a card we don't want on the field. They can ping for one here, but we actually have the Skyclave Apparition to deal with all this. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, it's also exiled, which just means it won't be in the graveyard. So I think this is the best option. Um, they do now have an artifact that they can use. <laughs> we kind of in inadvertently gave them the artifact if they wanted it, but it looks like they're just going to draw a card instead. And we have Coco next turn. Uh, they do have a pretty full hand here, which is worth noting. Um, they have a green source. That's one less card in the hand. Fantastic. And they've got another cauldron. 
Okay. Don't love it, but it's fine. All right, let's play you. Uh, well, I mean, we've got some options, not gonna lie. Uh, do we just go for the Righteous Valkyrie? I feel like we do because of the life gain here. I feel like that life gain is gonna be really important for us. I'm gonna pass. I'm not going to attack with the Apparition. The longer this game goes, potentially the harder of a win this is gonna end up being, depending on what they have in the deck. Uh, they, I'm sure, have plenty of good combo potential, so we're going to have to be a little careful here. Um, they decide to go ahead and kill the Skyclave, or the Righteous Valkyrie. Makes total sense. And they sack that, get their 1-1, one, one, totally fine. Okay, uh, hmm. Let's do this. So what we're going to do is exile the other familiar. We are going to attack here, uh, expecting they'll probably block, but what this does is mean they don't really have an artifact to sacrifice anymore. Uh, and so this engine is turned off. Also, just the Cauldron Familiar engine is shut off. Uh, there's Trail of Crumbs, okay. Now they do have an artifact, and they are out of cards in hand. Aside from this, I suppose. Sure. Okay, yep. Ooh, very nice. Okay, cool. <clears throat> uh, that's all very good. Um, let's see. How do we do this is the question. I'm actually going to Coco now. This is a very preemptive Coco, but we're doing it. All right, that's actually very good. Um, all right. Let's throw a counter here, I suppose. Doesn't really matter. And let's do this. If they want to double block, or not double block, but uh, yeah, block like this, that's fine. Uh, so they are going to be able to kill one thing uh, with Raska if they would like, which I think they probably will just to get the Resplendent Angel off the field. Um, this has been an interesting game so far. Very difficult game, truthfully. Um, oof. That's bad. That's very, very bad for us. Okay. Well, here's to hoping. Mayhem Devil is very rough. Uh, yeah, they're going to kill the Resplendent Angel. Makes sense. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Kill the Luminar Aspirant. I think they could have attacked in, potentially, if they had done something different, but this is fine, obviously. This is still very good. <laughs> Uh, they can sack food to bring back the cauldron familiar. This is this is the combo, everybody. Um, and they probably just get to kill the Skyclave apparition, right? They don't have any more mana, though. Okay, yeah, there's that. Now they can definitely do it because they can use the anvil to sack an artifact to do the whole thing. Yep. All right, that's a dead Skyclave. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> so what can we do? Basically nothing. Uh, we're just gonna throw this out and probably die. Uh, and you know what? Fair enough, Jun Sacrifice is a sick, sick deck. Wow. All right, I'm gonna good game them here, guys. They get to double up on all of this, uh, which is just not even worth battling through. Unfortunately, though, that does mean we end on six and three. Uh, so close to the full seven. I'm still very happy with this showing, guys. I thought this worked out much better, obviously, than the mono red. So very happy with that. Let's go ahead and claim that prize. Look at that, guys. Fantastic. Thank you guys so much for watching this Explore event. I really do appreciate it. I know this is a longer video. Uh, but you guys seem to like the last one despite us losing a lot. So hopefully you'll like this one even more. I love you guys very much. Thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow.